Cannabis Common Sense, the show that tells the truth about marijuana and the politics behind its prohibition. I'm standing here at Hemp Fest in Seattle with Keith Strop, the founder of, of Normal. I'm going to thank again, thank you for that. And uh, what do you think of this event? Uh, it's a it's my favorite event of the year. Uh, I travel around and do a number of these kinds of things, but there's nothing on the scale of the Seattle Hemp Fest other than the Seattle Hemp Fest. So uh, for those who haven't seen it, it is incredibly empowering. And I, I think 12, 13 years now, I've been coming in. I just, uh, I find it fascinating. And I think people in other parts of the country are beginning to pick up on that same phenomena. And uh, the Boston Freedom Fest is coming up in the month, and that's a wonderful thing on the Boston Common with all the history associated with that. Uh, and in the, the Port Portland uh, Hemp Sock, and uh, that's about the middle of next month as well. I was there last year. So, 12th and 13th of September. 12th and 13th of September. Uh, if you're in the region at all, and you identify with marijuana smokers or have marijuana smoking, for Christ's sake, come to this thing. Uh, you will find lots of people that are like-minded individuals like you. And uh, as I say, you'll feel empowered by it. This is Peace Love and Understanding that we're doing here. Peace Love and Understanding. Save your seeds. It doesn't take a miracle to cultivate the weeds. You can't sell brownies. You can't sell pot. You can't sell Rice Krispies and Hemp Fest. Why? Because we know how to keep this thing going. And that will bring us down. We have an unprecedented amount of freedom here. No other city in the world. No other rally in in America especially. I don't think any in the world is doing quite what we're doing. So, so please understand, we do not want to be the narcs, man. We arrested our 20 millionth American on marijuana charges. Are you ready for 420? In the mid-summer, the state of California determined that it would be missing 1.4 billion dollars in taxes if we didn't legalize it in California. Probably 10 times that many nationally. We've helped almost 100,000 people in eight states thank you, uh, get a medical marijuana permit. So that means they can legally possess, use, and grow medical marijuana. Medical marijuana is a great step forward, but it's not the end. What we need to do is end adult marijuana prohibition, restore industrial hemp, and help medical marijuana patients. The man who started all, Jack Miller. Has proved me the future of all mankind or there won't be a future. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or a Republican, we're gonna legalize marijuana no matter what happens in 10 years because
because when 60% of the American public wants something, they're going to get it. Contact your legislators. Tell them in marijuana prohibition, it's time to tax and regulate it. The more letters they get like that, the sooner the day will arrive. We're going to legalize marijuana! Peaceful! Look at this, it doesn't have any... What if this was a drink fest? Alcohol fest, meth fest, heroin fest, cocaine fest. There'd be dead people here. There'd be fights, there'd be stabbings. But it's pot fest, it's hemp fest. We are proud, we are loud. Give me an H! I freaking love Hempfest. Hempfest is the shit. Hempfest is badass. <laughs> Go Hempfest!
the White House put out a statement that there's no medical value for marijuana, but yet uh, we know from studies and from the work of patients at a time, things that you've uh, unearthed and do, that that's not true. We know from Elvia Maseki, who's getting her medication from the government, that they realize that there is some truth to what we say. So how do we take a bright mind like Obama and the White House administration and make them realize publicly, publicly, that there is a medical value to this plan? Uh, what they always resort back to is the lack of peer-reviewed studies where there are literally, I've got about 10,000 peer-reviewed studies on my computer dealing with cannabis. But what they, for the most part, they're not dealing with smoke marijuana other than early studies from the 70s. But there are a few and more coming out now dealing with smoke or with extracts. And what just came out last week from Germany basically challenging the whole idea of what the federal government is doing because there is documented medical value. I think the only thing that really makes politicians listen is when their constituency contacts them directly, phone, email, more importantly sometimes postcards, and then they start to see or visiting them. That's what they start to listen to when they realize that their positions are in death jeopardy if they don't follow the correct you know, direction, really. And I think that that's starting to happen more and more because I, having spent too much time this summer in Washington, D.C., I now understand much more of how, this, how the game is played. And if we can all learn how to play the game better, then we're going to have a magnified impact on changing things quicker and easier. So I think it's up to the voice of the people to make it happen. The more people that get to use the medicine, the more people will not only be healing their physical ailments, but the mental ailments that come from not having enough cannabinoid activity, either because you're just genetically a little weak on it, or you're not eating the right foods, or you're not using cannabis. So what I think is that the more and more people use it, the less they're going to be able to cling. And the federal government is not going to go down easy. And they're going to do everything they can at every step of the way to maintain some element of control. However, we all know that the truth and reality is on our side. So that it'll be a progressive weakening of the stupidity that they continuously enforce as we build the strength of knowledge and truth. And I can tell you one of the roads we're going down now with cannabis science has to do with HIV. And without going into details, because we haven't re released things, I'm not allowed to say things that are not properly press released. But in general, the reality is that there's somewhere between 35 and 50 million people in the world today with HIV. And that, that number is so dramatic that it's gonna cause not only the collapse of communities, but of countries and potentially the African continent in terms of economy. The United States does not want that to happen. You cannot produce enough antiretroviral drugs for 50 million people. It's not possible because of the complexity, but we can make cannabis products to satisfy that size of a population need. And you have 50 million people learning the truth in that sense, it's, a, it's irrevocable. The government's position will collapse over time, and we're doing everything we can to make that happen sooner than later. Get high. 
such a righteous message to the world that Seattle Hempfest is taking place on this beautiful day and we're peaceful, we're proud, and we're calling it out loud saying, end marijuana prohibition. We will never stop responsibly protesting until the day that everybody goes free and that the, the, the doors open from the prisons and our brothers and sisters come out of those cages into the, into the sun, into the air, and that the patients can be wheeled down with their IVs on their hospital beds and celebrate the victory. All of us together, it's coming, it's going to happen. The whole world, you know, we get, we've had media at, at Hempfest Central. By the way, that's our store, Hempfest Central at 12351 Lake City Way Northeast. After 21 years of operating grassroots to our ass roots out of our homes, completely decentralized, we realized we couldn't do a 22nd year like that. And we have offices now and a little storefront. We're trying to pay the rent and all that stuff and pay this bill here. Um, we've had media visits, television and newspaper media from BBC, Al Jazeera English, CNN, ABC, NBC, Mexican, Japanese, French, uh, Russian media have all shown up. It's amazing. Yesterday I talked to Russia Today on the phone. I was on CNN television live. It's happening, folks. The whole world is watching Seattle leading the way, proving we're not violent, we're not a threat, we're not criminals. We are a beautiful, mellow, spiritual, artistic community of Americans. We're individuals, and we're not a threat to anything except a bag of potato chips. And we're not going to stop speaking our truth to power, no matter how stressful or exhausting or intimidating it is to throw a Seattle Hymn Fest. We're going to risk it all as long as they let us do it. And one of the ways they're going to let us do it is if we all can clean this place up, get out of here safely with nobody hurt. Thank you so much, you guys, for 22 years of peaceful protest. It's, it's, it's frankly, it's just incredibly, it's as beautiful as you all are. <laughs> Thank you, folks. Woo! Yeah! Welcome to Hipstock. Hip oh, Festival. Yeah! Are you ready yeah! for 420? Woo! You guys are ready for 420 now? Hey, T minus uh, 45 minutes here. We're almost done. You know what? We have to stop the lies about cannabis. It caused so much suffering in this world. So many of our brothers and sisters are in jail. You know, Mark Emery, we got his picture right up here. There's Roger Christie, a reverend who is doing religious work in Hawaii. He's being held without bail. They're saying he's never been arrested for cannabis before or anything. He's 61 years old. They're saying he's a danger to the community and they won't let him out on bail. And they're holding him until next April for a trial. We'll probably be after that. But uh, Eddie Lapp has spoken on this stage many times. He's being held for 10 years. So we got to let our people go, you know, in marijuana prohibition. About 32 years ago, I went to a rally that was much like this one, right in front of the White House. It was the White House smoke-in, organized by the Yippies, the Dana Peel. That got me motivated and involved in the movement. About 30 years ago, I was uh, Washington State Normal Coordinator and uh, helped organize the state. And about 1984, I moved from Washington, Oregon to help the Oregon Marijuana Initiative. And we put an initiative on the ballot. We lost pretty overwhelmingly. But uh, in 84 as well, Jack Hare moved to Oregon from Los Angeles, and he uh, put together his book while working on the marijuana initiative in Portland, The Emperor Wears No Clothes. And he gave one of his last speeches here last year in the heat of the day. But, uh, you know, Jack's book basically catalyzed us all, changed us all. And Jack's book motivated untold scores of people getting out there and work for global cannabis freedom and restore industrial hemp. This book brought the whole picture into focus about hemp and cannabis. You know, now we know and can see marijuana catalyzed me. Marijuana motivates me. And I studied Chinese for a couple of years and went to school in China and started importing hip fabric and hip paper 
back in the early 90s and had a company, Tree Free Eco Paper, sold hit paper. I started and continued to produce a live weekly television show, Cannabis Common Sense, plays on cable here in the Northwest. And I also started and today run THCF, the Hemp and Cannabis Foundation. And in addition to being the sponsors here, perhaps most importantly, THCF has helped almost 150,000 people all across the United States, from Detroit, Michigan, and Marquette, Michigan, out to Kapa'a, Hawaii, and Honolulu, become legal medical marijuana patients, where they can legally possess, use, and grow their medicine. But you know what? It goes much deeper than this. Cannabis hemp is deeper than its incredibly long taproot. Marijuana's deep. You know, cannabis hemp cup catalyzed human civilization itself. Marijuana jump-started human civilization. All archaeologists agree that cannabis was among the first crops purposely grown by people. Over 12,000 years ago, people began growing hemp and its cultivation spread from the high Himalayas of Tibet and uh, Nepal and Pakistan and Kashmir and it spread down to the valleys of the Yellow River Valley in China, the Wang Ha Valley and to the Tigris Euphrates Valley in Iraq to the cradles of agriculture you know marijuana could very well be the whole reason that our ancestors gave up the hunting and gathering and started agricultural settlements so they could have their stash and I believe the cannabis is the most sacred gift from the Creator to us, humanity. Cannabis is the holiest of the holy gifts from our Mother Earth. Every part of cannabis hip is highly useful for the diverse multitude of our needs and the needs of human civilization. There's only one plant capable of taking care of most of human civilization's needs and that's marijuana. When we restore marijuana to its rightful place, and industrial hip to its rightful place in our economy, we're going to see marijuana fuel. And a great deal of our fuel and energy needs are going to be made from the seeds of marijuana. Hidden marijuana seed oil run any diesel engine. The marijuana stems produce most of our fiber, can produce most of our fiber for clothing, paper, building materials, and it could wipe out deforestation and stop a great deal of our pollution. Hip seeds produce more and healthier oil and protein. Hip protein and oils are rich in the essential fatty acids and EFAs that our brain and cardiovascular system need. Marijuana seeds make omega-3, 6, and 9 in the perfect ratio for human health. And hip protein from marijuana seeds makes all eight of the amino acids that our body needs, again, in just the right ratio for human health. When marijuana seed oil ages and goes rancid, it's no longer useful for a food, but it's a productive biodiesel fuel. You can take that oil, pour it right into any diesel engine, and it's going to run it with no conversions. The engine or the fuel. And you can synthesize it into gasoline and plastic anything petroleum can make. It's not only healthy for us, it could solve our world energy problems and wipe out a lot of pollution. The hemp stalks, the stems, are the most productive source of fiber on earth, making 10 tons of bass fiber for canvas, rope, lace, and linen, and 25 tons of herd fiber for paper and building materials per acre. Way back in 1916, the United States Department of Agriculture put out a bulletin, bulletin 404, said a waste product for making canvas, rope, lace, and linen from hemp. That waste product makes four times more paper than the most productive tree species. The, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, back there in World War II, put out a video called Hemp for Victory. They showed farmers how to reintroduce hemp it's available on YouTube. And that's just the steep seeds and the stems. You know, we need these seeds and the stems. Don't throw them away. But then we have the flowers. Hip flowers make human brain chemicals or neurotransmitters and medicines that help, help fight cancer, 
multiple sclerosis, neurodegenerative diseases, gastrointestinal disorders, relieves pain, helps glaucoma, stops seizures and spasms, and restores balance in the body, restores homeostasis. The flowers of hemp will also make you laugh, make you feel good, and relieve depression, post-traumatic stress, and anxiety. I truly believe that hemp is our Mother Earth's greatest gift to humanity. You know, the forces of ignorance, evil, and darkness are afoot. The laws against marijuana are just plain wrong. Marijuana prohibition is a conspiracy from the wealthy of this world to feed us the poisonous petrochemical products. When we legalize marijuana, it will create untold multitude of jobs and return economic control to the people. What he say? No more wars for petroleum when we start to use hemp again. Instead, it can lead the way to economic and ecological sustainability and help save the remnants of our biosphere's precious heritage for future generations and the seventh generation and beyond. You know, right now, cannabis freedom is dawning with votes across the West. California's Prop 19 is a groundbreaking step to legalize possession and cultivation and allow a small amount of herb and allow it sale. Yeah. Oregon's medical marijuana dispensary ballot will create jobs and uh, uh, help uh, patients. And then in Arizona and South Dakota, they're going to uh, allow medical marijuana in a vote. Woo! Going closing, I just want to say that we have to stop the drug war before they kick in your door. We gotta work together to legalize marijuana. For those facing execution for anti-cannabis laws in Malaysia and elsewhere, you gotta work for global cannabis freedom. For those languishing in jails and prisons, for the anti-cannabis laws out there everywhere, we gotta work for global cannabis freedom. For our forests and the web of life and our mother earth, which suffers from the extraction and uh, poisoning of our environment. We gotta work for global cannabis freedom. And for economic and political justice, we gotta work for global cannabis freedom. For our brothers and sisters and all that have fallen before us, like Jack Hare, Todd McMahon, so many of us, we gotta work for global cannabis freedom. Cannabis, hemp, marijuana, I believe is truly the healing of the nation. So let our people grow. Restore hip, hip for victory. Thanks for having us. We've been putting up with people going to jails and prisons for one, two, 10, five, 20 years for marijuana. It's got to end, it's an outrage. It's an injustice. We are not a threat, we're Americans. We're, we're peaceful, we're nonviolent. And you know what's happening today at Seattle Hemp Fest? The police are handing out bags of Doritos. We're winning! We are winning this war on us. And we might be living in this oasis called Seattle, but somebody, while Hemp Fest is going on, somebody's life changed today. Somebody had that cop car behind their, behind their car today, somewhere in America. They had their doors kicked in today, somewhere in America. They had the handcuffs go on today, somewhere in America. Their life will never be different. Their family might be broken up. They might lose their marriage. They might lose their home. They might have their kids taken away. They might be put in jails and prisons like a common criminal when all they've done is kick back and enjoy some music and watch some tunes and watch the TV and hang out and feel good and relaxed while other people smoke cigarettes into the cancer wards and drink alcohol into the detox center. No one's ever died in 5,000 years of smoking marijuana. No one's ever overdosed. No one's ever had a toxic reaction. No one's ever had DTs. No one's ever had their brain fried or their liver destroyed. No one's ever gotten lung cancer from marijuana, despite the lies. Despite the lies. And we're winning. It's so beautiful to see this beautiful community and culture here for the first time able to celebrate a serious win. Measure 64 in Colorado, I-502 in Washington State, ground-breaking, potentially game-changing events. All of our lives we lived under this, this meme, this prevailing myth that marijuana prohibition is an iron curtain. It's here to stay. There's nothing you can do about it. It's never going away. 
Well, we've just blown that right out of the water. We know that's not true. We know that prohibition is more like a brick wall. And we took a few bricks out. You take another couple bricks out and the right couple bricks out, the whole thing is going to come tumbling down. It's not about if it's going to happen. Now it's about when it's going to happen because we're going to win this thing. And if we have to come back and do another hundred Seattle Hemp Fest, if our great-grandchildren have to do this and bear this weight and this load and this responsibility, this stress and anxiety to throw a Seattle Hemp Fest in the Urban Center in one of the most beautiful series of parks right on the Puget Sound in one of the gems right in the view of the Space Needle, if we've got to continue to do this, whatever it takes, whatever it takes necessary to win our freedom and our equality and our justice, we're gonna do it. And it just feels so good to be able to stand up here with all of these great speakers and activists and, and performers, bands and DJs, vendors and sponsors and volunteers, and this incredible, beautiful audience that's kept Tempfest violence-free for 21 years. So beautiful, such a beautiful statement of unity and community, of power, you know, Hempfest is an act of love for all of us volunteers because we love this crowd and this community so much. It's a leap of faith every year, praying nothing goes wrong. Nobody jaywalks and gets hit by a car, or nobody falls on the rocks and or drowns in the water, or walks across the railroad tracks and gets hurt. The last thing we want is for anybody to get hurt at Seattle Hemp Fest. So thanks for keeping it iry, being responsible, keeping yourselves safe. Stay high. Drated. High and drated. And the question of hip, the question of cannabis, is the most vivid illustration of how this government has overstepped its bounds in policing the private behavior of citizens. When they told us we couldn't plant a hip seed in the ground, they severed us from the natural cycle. That is what they seek to do. I call it the synthetic subversion, where they want to replace all the natural products on earth that used to be grown out of God's earth and God's seed and replace them with synthetic products and knock our farmer out of the agrarian society and the agrarian market and make the ghost towns of our small cities and villages across this country. We need to rediscover a cash crop, yes. one that will allow our farmers to go back to the land, one that will allow our farmers to compete with the petrochemical pipelines. You plant U.S. 7% agricultural land in hemp, you will have to import another drop of oil. We can replace the spills in the Gulf. We can replace the uh, environmental catastrophe that the petroleum pipelines have cast upon Mother Earth and instead let our farmers grow hemp as a fuel crop. Finally. In 1991, Willie Nelson and I poured hemp oil into my Mercedes diesel and drove it across Kentucky in my bid for governor. That's why he started his biofuel plant. Listen, folks, you all have been handed a, a, a torch. Jack Hare, bless his soul, passed away. I'm getting old up here. You know, we cannot make carry this ball much longer. You have to become educated. You have to learn the truth. You have to reach out there and grab the responsibility of maintaining your freedom. Every generation must rewin its own freedoms. And those very sacrifices, right up to the very last second I've been talking to you, made on your behalf, cannot continue anymore. What really counts is your all's commitment to what sacrifices you're willing to make in the future to maintain your freedom. And it's right there in front of you. I encourage you, I encourage you to learn the law. I encourage you to learn the political process. I encourage you to reach out there and take responsibility of your own freedom live your life like a warrior. God bless you all. Thanks for having me out here in Seattle. This last song I love singing, it's uh, called Let's All Be Farmers, and it's just, it's about why I'm here, and uh, I'd like to sing it for you. Thank you. Let's all be farmers. And save the trees. One acre of hemp will save the forest, please. Let's all be farmers. Get filthy rich instead.
Truth like a fist full of lightning. Put it out in the world and he let it go. And it went viral out into cyberspace until nobody could say that they didn't know. Now what you don't know can kill you. The truth will get you arrested. Now what you don't know can kill you. Truth will get you arrested. Should have seen him popping off shots in the helicopter as it hovered overhead. Should have seen the figures on the ground up and run for cover, tangled in the wounded and the dead. It wasn't like they said it was going to be. There were no heroes in the White House. Those people on the ground, they weren't even soldiers, they were civilians. What do you think about that? Oh, what you don't know will kill you. The truth will get you arrested. Oh, what you don't know will kill you. The truth will get you arrested. They came for Bradley Manning. Put him in a little white room where the light was always on. And they locked the door behind them. They said, we're going to give you justice until the justice is all gone. Now what you don't know can kill you. The truth will get you arrested. Now what you don't know can kill you. The truth will get you arrested. Yes, it will. Secrets are the fuel to run a big machine. The secrets are the poison of our history. The secrets are a coward that don't like to be seen. They hide in mystery. In mystery. Now what you don't know can kill you. The truth will get you arrested. Now what you don't know can kill you. The truth will get you arrested. They say that history is written by the victors who define it and then they nail it down. Yeah, that history is a wheel and wheels spin around. You can't hide away forever, you know, sooner or later somebody's gonna see. And Chelsea Manning blew the whistle and that makes her a hero to me. You don't know can kill you. The truth will get you arrested. What you don't know can kill you. The truth will get you arrested. Get you arrested. Get you arrested. You'll be in Seattle 
Birmingham Fest, and, and being the largest, most sophisticated uh, cannabis policy reform event in the world, we try to make things up to you. You know, we're gonna do a countdown for the 420 here and all that stuff, but, but you know, I'll tell you, we felt so bad about the fact that Tommy couldn't be here that we decided to do something about it. appropriate to start here in Seattle because it's the, the home of the place where the young and the young of heart took to the streets and flashed a giant neon sign saying we're not putting up with this shit anymore. It's because there's an amazing propaganda machine in this country. Don't you think? I mean, it's a propaganda machine that makes us actually believe that we live in a democracy when we know we don't live in a democracy. I mean, it's a propaganda machine that talks about us living in a free country when we know we're not living in a free country. You're free to do whatever you want to do as long as it doesn't go against what the government wants you to do. So how are we going to turn that around? <laughs> This, the Seattle Hemp Fest, are the way to turn this thing around. Every one of you people who showed up here today, you're making a statement, and I'm damn proud of you. And you know what I have to say? Keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. And I think it will change. I think it will change. Thank you all for coming out here today.
H. Give me an A. Give me an M. Give me an P. Your turn. I'll do them. Give me an A. Give me an E. Give me an M. Give me an P. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the House Band of Seattle Hemp Fest, the incredible. We've got the herbivores, our house band playing. We've got so many people out there, I don't know how to count them. Hey, Mr. Politician. And if you are a loved one or looking for a doctor who can help you get medical marijuana anywhere across the United States, you can call that toll-free number on your screen. It's 1-800-723-0188. That's 1-800-723-0188. We have doctors who are willing to help you from Hawaii to the East Coast. So just uh, if you're here in Portland, though, you can call us locally at 503-281-5100. That's 503-281-5100. 5100. And if you want to get involved in our movement to end marijuana prohibition and help hemp, call our political office at 503-235-4606. I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Cherry. We'll have you guys Pleasure. back on here after the Seattle Hemp Fest. Pleasure to be here. Thank you, John. Thank you, Casper. Thank you, viewers. Tune in next week and help us restore hemp. <laughs>
There's a train coming And it's already 